the Spanish have a saying uh, for something great, uh, it is the pear, and this is really great. Um, I've been doing research about the artist Cy Running from Tata Concordia for many years. He did fabulous mosaics, and if any of you have been in the uh, First Lutheran Church in Fargo, this is the color palette of the entire front of that church, but beautiful piece of work. Uh, what else is here? Uh, well, there's a very nice painting here uh, by Doug Stuckley of the Buck. Uh, just lots of finesse in the way he handles paint and, and so on. Um, also, uh, Piero Berg knows how to <laughs> lay on paint sparingly but effectively. I think her husband's a geologist and she spent time looking at layers of earth and geology, but it sort of shows up in her painting. But nicely done. Um, there's a mixed media piece over here by Beverly Bender. There's lots of mixed media in the show, and uh, it's just fun to see how people use different materials to you know, their advantage. Around the corner, I like jazz, and of course, when I saw the title, I was doubly impressed by this whimsical sculpture of Don Paul's. Um, I'm, I collect art, and I'm in the process of uh, trying to make sense of it all, and I worry sometimes about the fragility of things, but this one is so fun, and I'm uh, really taken with it. Uh, this glass by John Moffat called Topaz, beautiful colors, purple and gold, and of course always very effective. This is one that didn't win an award, but I was reminded of the Palmer House in Chicago, really a great, if you're ever going to Chicago, that's the place to stay. Ruth, reasonable rates, and a really cool place. Um, around the corner, Jim Grimstead's Alley at the Library. What struck me about this is the freshness and the kind of, this is, this is now, this is human. <laughs> Kids, you know, trying to make sense of our, our downtime. Uh, nice use of these paperback covers. And, uh, beautiful, nicely executed, nice proportion. Really well done. Um, Ken Freibold from Jamestown has these two large graphite drawings, a joyful lady and a girl with a Russian scarf. Um, nicely done. I, I, you know, I think if Jack Youngquist who taught drawing at Morehead State, he would probably have suggested, let your, uh, the palm of your hand drag through here once in a while. <laughs> or, you know, let numbers mess it up a little bit. Uh, or maybe even try charcoal or pastels and, you know, keep, keep drawing, though. That's the important thing. Uh, not enough of that today. The architects at NDSU try to preach drawing, and uh, it's a dying uh, skill, unfortunately. Um, fun assemblages all over the place in here. This is one of Sue Morrissey's. Uh, but this work of hers, we classify this as sculpture. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, oh, this is Bonnie Tressler, I'm sorry, the same artist who did the pair. And uh, Martin's Imperial Bow. But uh, really fantastic. This is way beyond craft. <laughs> you know, really good. Gretchen Biederman's Ceramic Horse. It's another winner. Uh, this painting by Sue Morrissey called Fox Love. Some of you might remember the Frank Sampson show that was here. He was obsessed with foxes. Maybe that just drew me to this image. But I like the, uh, the texture of this. And the, uh, it's, it's expressive, but it's graphic. Um, this is my friend Rando from Fargo. Uh, this was fun. This is a, how old is this kid? Oh, a teenager? 
Younger. Younger. Junior high. Well, uh, Miles Pierce. A nice idea taking uh, color crayons and uh, melting them. Wayne uh, Tollison, who taught art at NDSU for many years, used to I asked him once about his color theory when he taught to students in terms of co color and composition, and he said, once you know a lot about color, uh, what goes together, what doesn't, and so on, supposedly, then think about two colors that might not work together. And that is very difficult to do, and it produces some really interesting paintings. And of course, if you're working with the color, the Crayola box, there are no two colors that don't go together because they have the same intensity. I remember first grade sitting there across in Janice Orthens, I'm trying to gross her out, I'm going to use purple and green, Janice, what do you think about that? Because she could draw between the lines very well, and I couldn't, so I was going to gross her out with these, you know, sort of expressionist colors. Well, the fact is, you can't find two colors that don't work in the Crayola box, so. I was learning Wayne Tollison's lesson at an early age. Uh, this picture by Scott Seiler isn't quite as sharp as I might like, but then again, that's because things are moving. But the contrast is terrific. Wish it had a little bigger mat, just to give it a little more um, respect. But great topic, it's certainly appropriate. It's, like, it's a lot like the human quality of the picture of the girl in the alley. This is the life on the prairie. Uh, there was a picture of uh, furrows. Let's, let's, just, let's, let's go real quick there, uh, Angela. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this is a photo by Paul, Paul Funding's land called Furrow, and it's a nice contrast with the windmill and the energy picture, sort of a Charlie Beck from Fergus Falls picture. But these are not easy to do. I've shot lots of these myself, and uh, it's, a, it's a really nice contrast with the other picture, which has the, the windmills and so on. Okay, where to next? Let's see. Um, let's go here. Of course, Linda Whitney, a great artist, really. I think this is, to me, the most graphic, the uh, tiny tot fancy dancer, but beautiful work, and I understand she's leaving for the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so this may be the last we see of her work for some time, perhaps. Uh, this is fun. Uh, Jim Grimstead, uh, the grand prize winner over around the corner with the girl in the alley, also did this sort of kitsch thing uh, of his superheroes. The buffalo, of course, always appears in, in lots of work here. And, it's always fun to see variations like Barb Nables. Uh, it, Sue Morrissey did this nice, graph, beautiful, really graphite drawing combined with a collage and mixed media. Um, it's very artful. Uh, we go over here. This is a monotype. Uh, by Sharon Linehan from Valley City. This is a one-off, you know, you ink the plate or, and make an impression and that's what you get. So it takes a little bit of courage to do a um, monotype, honorable mention. Uh, Bill Naibo, uh, Pablo the Pitcher, fun thing. You know, pa Picasso did a lot of ceramics and they're, uh, they're still on the market. They're actually even semi-reasonably priced, but this reminded me of that. Um, nice triptych here, a uh, mosaic by Kim Fringle again from Jamestown. Uh, we, had a, we decided that we have a category called mosaic, but it could be sculpture, it could be in with ceramics and glass, but Nevertheless, it's a nicely executed. I understand she did some of the benches up in the park, and those are really cool, because that could have been a disaster, I, pr I promise you. I photographed that in my book about Jamestown, and I, was, I did not have to go out of my way to crop any of that stuff out of the picture, because it was all nice, really nicely executed. Uh, well, there's lots of good stuff to look at here. I mean, this is, this is kind of a 
fun thing by Joel Hagerly. I doubt that he did it in the last year or two, but it's really, really nicely done. Uh, but, you know, it's an assemblage. Um, so I think, you know, people, there, there's, much, there's, there's more to see out in the lobby. Do we want to go out in the lobby or not? No. Let's, let's go to the lobby real quick. I want to look at one more thing. This is sort of hidden against the wall. I don't know if you can, uh, your camera will pick it up, but Don Paul, I understand he's a former priest and has got this sort of uh, religious overtone, but you know, you contrast this with the Dizzy Gillespie uh, sculpture inside, which he also did. I think you've got a, a very well rounded artist sculpture. So that's it for me. I always enjoy Jamestown, and thanks for having me.